It's Sunday again and it's time of my learning Python with Google Vlog. It's been a crazy week and I haven't got much time uh, to spend on studying, so this week I've only had enough time to complete two modules of the six required to complete the Python crash course. Uh, module module six, uh, modules four and five are gone and I've just started uh, the final module, the sixth one. And the entire, the entire certification, as I said last time, is split into six courses and I'm currently doing the first course, the Python crash course. And the entire certification has four teachers uh, from the Google team, uh, two males and two females. Uh, my first teacher uh, for the Python crash course is Christina Ruffer and she's recording uh, this course from one of the Google Game Room. What I learned in the module 4 and 5. So starting from the module 4, uh, I learned some of the basic data structures like strings, lists and tuples, tuples and dictionaries. Um, strings are sequences of characters and they are immutable and we learn how to create, edit and use indexing on strings, uh, check if a given substring was contained in a string, uh, use some of the strings built methods, built in methods, and we uh, saw how to format strings with the format method, and at the end of the module uh, there was the usual quiz, uh, where we worked on two scripts, uh, the first was uh, to check how a script to check how uh, if a word was a palindrome um, and the second one was a function uh, to convert miles to kilometers then we moved on the uh, lists and tuples section where we learned all about these two data types lists are essentially sequences of elements of any type and they are mutable uh, while tuples are a sequence of elements of any type uh, but they are immutable uh, they, the difference between them is how we write them so tuples are um, um, the syntax for tuples is within parentheses while lists are in square brackets and we learn how to use the indexing on lists to find an element uh, <coughs> then we we uh, we used the in uh, to check if a given string was in a list um, then we saw how to modify elements of a list uh, with this built-in methods uh, like the append insert the remove or the pop methods then we saw how to iterate over lists and tuples uh, with the loop for in loops. Uh, then we touched a quite weird and complex topic, which is the list comprehensions um, that are used to iterate through a list and create a new list with the result in a single line of code. Uh, that was quite cool, but still uh, a bit complex I think um, then we had an overview of the common sequences operations like find the length of segue a sequence uh, the indexing or the enumerate method and loops and conditionals uh, then we move to um, the list built-in methods like sort extend clear copy reverse and these are on top of the orders uh, mm, methods that we covered before like the append insert remove and pop methods and at the end of this um, section there was a there was a quiz uh, with two of the three well two of the three um, questions were quite complicated uh, a script to replace file extensions uh, of, for a group of files and another to convert file permissions from octal uh, which is numeric value to strings. They both uh, took me quite some time to figure out, uh, but at the end, the I did pass. Uh, finally, a new data type that I never heard, but 
which is similar to many other programming languages, which is dictionaries. Um, and as I say, this is, it's another data type, uh, and it's a data type like keys and value pairs, uh, and it's separated by columns. Um, the, key, the key is in the dictionary can be any immutable data type like string, integers, floats, boolean, tuples. Uh, this uh, this is quite similar to um, multi-dimensional arrays in PHP or even in JavaScript thing. Uh, so while other values, while well the values of the dictionary uh, can be any anything from uh, including strings, integer order, uh, floats, booleans, tuples, order, uh, dictionaries, or even objects. Uh, and the dictionaries are mutable, meaning that we can modify modify them uh, by adding, removing, or replacing elements in the dictionary, similar to a list. And then uh, we saw how to create, change, add, remove elements from the dictionary. Uh, how to iterate over the contents of the dictionary using different loops. Then we uh, use the items and the keys and values methods to iterate over the entire dictionary or only um, through the keys or the values. Then we we saw some of the commun commun operations uh, like the remove. Uh, how to remove elements from the dictionaries, looping, looping uh, to the dictionary, indexing, etc. Uh, and some of the built-in methods like the keys, the values, the update, clear or get methods. And at the end of this section there was uh, another quiz. Uh, one of the two questions was quite complicated and it took me quite a while to figure out. But at the end I did pass. Uh, at the end of the entire module 4, there was a grad graded assessment with 10 quits and actually here, the second quits actually killed me. Uh, it was really, at the end, I realized that it was quite simple uh, to find the solution for the quits. Uh, and I did it in 5 seconds after failing the first one uh, and in a single line of code, which was quite annoying because it took me really ages to figure out something quite simple. Um, but at, at the end, after the first attempt, uh, which was passed with 90% of score, I tried again and I, I found the solution for the quiz two and I passed with 100% of score. Uh, then the module five, five was quite, quite interesting, despite was an optional module um, and that was about object-oriented programming in Python and I like, I really like a lot object-oriented programming and that was one of my favorite modules so far uh, um, object-oriented is used to describe specific components of our code or application and we learn some of the basics uh, how to use two of the, the built-in methods like the dir method and the help method to um, get information about the object, how to define a class, how to instantiate a new object, or use the dot notation to access the different um, attributes and methods of the object. At the end of the of each section, there was a um, uh, quick quiz with two questions, uh, where we build some scripts using object-oriented programming. Then the second section of the module 5 was about classes and methods, so how to define a class, um, how to define methods and variables, uh, how to use a constructor uh, or some of another special method which is the string method um, to instruct Python to show a specific output uh, for our object when we print it. Then uh, we saw how to document our code with the doc strings. Um, that was quite useful to know, uh, and that goes together with the help method because it, when you use the when we use the help method, we see uh, an output that if it's 
related to something that we have written uh, if we use the uh, doc string so we can describe what a function or a class uh, does and for us when we go back to the code later or for someone else that reads our code quite useful and then we had an, a quick introduction to Jupyter Notebook which is an open source document it's a special type of document that can contain uh, code blocks and other elements like images and text uh, and at the end of this section there was another quiz uh, but this time was um, it was done using the Jupyter Notebook uh, that was quite cool. Uh, then at the end of this module, there were uh, at the end of this section there was the uh, code reviews and module section where we uh, learned about inheritance and child classes, uh, composition where we have a relationship between two classes that are not mm, uh, connected, so one is not the child of the other. Uh, then we saw some of the built-in methods. Um, that Python, the, the Python standard library uh, provides the modules, some, um, some of the built-in modules that the Python uh, standard library provides uh, we use the random module and the daytime module um, to just to profound to have uh, an idea of how they work then at the end of this section there was another quiz using Jupyter Notebook and at the end of the entire module there was another great assessment using the Jupyter module actually that was quite interesting because we saw how to uh, simulate simulate a server and the load balancer and that was quite cool uh, despite no, not really easy I, I think uh, now I am uh, I am doing the module 6 which is the final uh, module for this crash course on Python and I've just started out and it's it's about building a final project to solve a real world uh, problem uh, I'll tell you how it goes next week for the next vlog uh, that's it for now and take care